turn to Romans 12, and we're looking at verses in Romans 12, 13 through 17. I'll not be able to cover all of these today, but these verses, when you read these as a believer, Paul's writing these to believers, you should have the doctrine in your soul, in your inner man, in Romans chapter 1 through 8. And by now, you need, to, you need to learn how to apply what you've got in you. And these verses here, you can't apply these verses using your flesh. You've got to do more than flesh. And that's why I put on the board for you, I want to change my life, but I can't. You know, for you to want to and try to change your life by your flesh, you'll never get it done with these verses right here. Romans 12, 13. Paul says to disputing to the necessity of saints, I'm sorry, distributing to the necessity of saints, give to hospitality, bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not, rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind, one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide, provide things honest in the sight of all men. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. The opportunity, Lord, we have to look in Romans today and we look and we understand that we can't change our life by the flesh with these verses. Lord, I, I just pray that this will be a help and benefit to us. We'll rejoice and give you all the glory and honor for it. For we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Again, I want to change my life, but I can't. When you read those verses, if you try to do it on your own flesh, you're not going to do it. I mean, you, you look at that, you let somebody make you mad or do something to you, in verse 17, recompense of no man evil for evil. Here you are, somebody bothers you, if somebody hits you or whatever, you're ready to fight. So you've got things, I mean, there's issues with that, and I understand that, but I'm just using that as an example, but these verses you can't change yourself just because you want to. There's got to be something in your inner man to make you change and make you react the way you should based on these verses. Well, what we've got, we've got the power of the Spirit of God working inside of a believer. Well, how does the Spirit of God work in us today? Through the Word of God. And, and that's very important. You know, I, you know, there's been things in my life before I got saved, for example. I tried to change, and I couldn't. After I got saved, I tried to change some things, and I could not. And you cannot change unless the power of God, the Spirit of God working through the Word of God changes you. And you, you know what the truth is. You come to the knowledge of the truth. You write the divine word of truth. You understand Romans 1 through 8. You're building up that doctrine in you. And now you're, you're taking Romans 12 and, and, God, and, and take the opportunity that God gives us uh, to apply grace. I mean, there's opportunities out there. And every day we need to learn to apply grace in our lives. It's just an opportunity to do that. Somebody speaks kind of harshly to you, that's an opportunity for you to be kind and gentle. That's hard to do. And it, you can't do it if you don't have the doctrine in you to do it, for the most part. So, when you're looking at Romans 12, 13 through 17, there's two things here as a believer. You've got one is... I've got it posted for you. You've got one, am I going to choose the energy of the flesh? Or number two, am I going to choose the power of the Spirit of God working in me through the Word of God? That's the two choices that, you know, that we have when you look at Romans 12, 13 through 17. And you think about the, what it, the energy of the flesh. What is the flesh? Well, it's our old sin nature. Romans 7 talks about our, our old sin nature. And an example of this would be in Romans chapter 8. Point, uh, turn there. Romans chapter 8. And we're talking about our old sin nature. And here's an example in Romans chapter 8. Talking about a believer. Romans chapter 8. Paul says this. There is therefore now no condemnation of them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now he's, he's talking to believers here. And you understand there, what is a condemnation? A lot of people don't understand that there about the condemnation. Well, that's a believer who's operating on the basis of, of the flesh. When you operate on the basis of the flesh, there's condemnation. And this is not eternal condemnation for a believer. 
as far as our soul. Well, what is it? When you operate on the basis of the flesh, depend on that flesh, what we do as a believer, we temporarily cut off from grace as an operating principle in our lives. We just we don't use grace to operate in our lives. We're trying to do it ourselves. And when you do that, the flesh is doing it. And that's that law syndrome. It goes all the way back to that. And that's the problem that we're faced with. And the, and the result of that is when, you, when you're trying to do it, let the flesh do it. When you say myself, I'll, I'll use myself as an example. When I ignore the Word of God and don't renew my mind in the Word of God daily, and then when I have an issue and I'm trying to let the flesh do it, and the flesh can't do it, and what I've done, I've cut myself off from the grace that, that I, could, I could apply in my life. I'm not using it. So I'm not being fruitful. I'm not producing fruit for the Lord. And that, that's the issue that we have with our lives. You know, you think about the flesh. How is walking after the flesh defined? Well, Romans chapter 8 there, verse 5. Romans 8, 5. How is walking after the flesh defined? Romans 8, 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So you, you look at that, they're walking after the flesh to mind the things of the flesh. When you mind something, you've got, you're minding it, you've got your mind on it, and you're paying attention to the things of the flesh. And we've all done that. It's easy to pay attention to the flesh. You put, you've got your mind on that. What's Paul say? Set your mind on things above, not on things on this earth. So... The next question would be, why can't the flesh please God? Well, look, look at this, Romans 8, 7. Romans 8, 7, why can't the flesh please God? Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Notice that because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Our flesh is enmity against God. It's a rebel. Have you ever figured that out? I know you have. I figured out this flesh lo loves to rebel. We're rebels. And that's all, that's all you can say out of us. The flesh does, it loves to rebel against reading the Word of God. I'm speaking for myself. The flesh rebels on the word, reading the Word, studying the Word. The flesh really rebels on praying. You know, you'll, you'll make every excuse why you shouldn't read. You'll make every excuse why you shouldn't study, and you'll and you'll make excuses. Well, you don't really have to make excuses on praying. You just ignore it, push it off the side. Like you know, we forget about what Paul says: "says pray without ceasing." Verses like that, we need verses in our inner man to pop up and remind us: "Hey, you need to be praying without ceasing. You need to pray about everything in your life." And we don't always do that, and that's why we. I, I, I'm giving you this about applying the doctrine in the details of our life. We learn to apply the doctrine. You learn to take scripture and put it, in, you've got it in your soul, and whenever you need it, you pull it out and say, here it is, this is what I've got to do. I've got to pray. I've got to just not pray for about five minutes, pray for everybody in the assembly, and say, I've done my good deed, and stop. Well, we'll just keep on praying. We can talk to our Heavenly Father. We can share with Him that I'm so thankful that I'm justified, that you've justified me by the blood of Christ. I'm so thankful for the Word of God, complete. I'm thankful that I'm complete in Christ Jesus. You can just keep on talking to Him, but you've got to have the doctrine in your inner mind. That makes a difference. And it has with me. And you think about that rebel part, the enmity and the hatred. And you can, I won't go back to Genesis 3.15, talking about the seed of Satan bruising the heel of Christ, and the seed of the woman bruising the heel of Satan. And you know what, uh, what, what that is. You know, when you think about Satan when Christ came the first time. The seed of Satan bruising the heel of Christ, putting him on a cross. You know, that's, that, that's a reference to the first coming, of course. And you think about Satan convinced Israel to crucify the Lord. They did. And you think about that. And here the Lord Jesus Christ came in his earthly ministry. And he did signs and miracles and wonders before their eyes. And yet, they were deceived. Satan convinced them to go ahead and crucify him. That, that's powerful there with Satan. But on the other hand, to see the woman, the bruising the head of Satan's seed, that's the second coming. 
And you know what's going to happen with, it, with the, that seed, the Antichrist, at the second coming? Cast on the lake of fire. What's going to happen to Satan? Chained for the thousand years. Let loose for a season. And then cast on the lake of fire. So you think about all that, the power of God. You know, you think about this flesh. This flesh, it, there's power in this flesh. You think about this flesh wants to convince me, hey, you need to do this. The Spirit says, no, you do this. It, there's always a contrast. And that's what, uh, you know, you think about Romans 8 and 9. When I first was saved, they told me the next thing you need to do, you need to seek the Holy Spirit. Well, little did I know I was already had the Holy Spirit in me. So I didn't know any doctrine. I heard the gospel that Christ died for my sins, and I trusted Him. I believe that. But I didn't know any doctrine, and all of us here understand today in Romans 8 and 9, for example. Romans chapter 8 and verse 9 about the Holy Spirit. And Romans 8 and 9 says, But you're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. So it's plain, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not saved. And I was saved, but I was ignorant of what the Bible said because I didn't know any Bible. I just got saved, and, and I didn't know what the truth was. So you think about the, the flesh. You think about how it fights. It's, it's, it's always a, a battle. For an example, turn to Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. Galatians 5, 17. I've had a battle with this flesh ever since I've been saved. And you have too. You know, I, I never thought I'd be in a war, but I've been in a war, a spiritual war, ever since I've gotten saved. And it's been going on since 1970. And it, you know what? It's not getting any better, but the fight gets worse. The more doctrine you learn, the, the battle's there. You fight. You have to fight. And the only way you can fight the battle is with the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. And, and you've got to renew your mind every day to do that. And the day that you don't renew your mind, that's the day you have problems. I mean, that's the day that you have a tendency to, f to fail. So Galatians 5, 17, Paul says, For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit. So there you have it, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. So that, there's a battle that you have there. But, you know, you think about those two things when you read Romans 12, 13 through 17. You got the flesh. And all of us know by now by using this to introduce it, the flesh is bad news. Well, what about the second thing? What about the power of the Spirit of God working in us through the Word of God? That's what we need to be having. And the power of the Spirit of God working in us. You know, as a believer, we possess a new mind. I'm, I'm dead, uh, uh, dead to sin and alive unto God, but we possess a new mind. Uh, turn to Romans chapter 7, for example. Romans 7, 23. In Romans chapter 7, verse 23, talking about the power of the Spirit of God working in us. Once you were saved, your Spirit of God came in you in that moment, circumcised you, sealed you until the day of redemption, baptized you, in the body of Christ. And he's my teacher today. So I, I depend on God the Holy Spirit to teach me through, through, through his word, the word of God. So Galatians, uh, Romans 7, 23, Paul says this, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the... I'm in the wrong chapter. I'm in the... Romans 7, 23. <clears throat> but I see another law in my members. Well, what members? You got members there. What your body got? Members. So I see another law in my members, that's the old sin nature, warring against the law of my mind. And you think about the mind bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. You got the mind, your spirit's got a mind, your soul's got a mind. So what you got? I see, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. So you got the renewed mind that comes through the study of the Word of God. You, you've got to have that. And, and Paul says, But I see another law of my members warring against the law of my mind. And for example, turn to 1 Corinthians 2 16. 
1 Corinthians 2, 16. In 1 Corinthians 2, 16, talk about the mind. We possess a, a new mind, but 1 Corinthians 2, 16 says this. Watch what it says. 1 Corinthians 2, 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. See, the mind of Christ. So what do you do with your mind? We have the mind of Christ. What do we need to do with this mind? Well, Romans 12, 2 tells us something. Romans 12, 2. In Romans 12, 2, Paul says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind. You've got the mind of Christ. And you can be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. There's a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. That goes with Philippians 1, 8, 9, and 10 over there. So when we, when we have, have the doctrine built up in us, we've got the mind of Christ, we renew our minds, and we've got doctrine built up in us, and when we learn, as we learn, we apply it in the details of our life, we learn to choose what's good, what's acceptable, what's perfect. I don't want the good, I don't want the acceptable, I, I don't want the perfect. And that's what we learn to do with a renewed mind. Well, when you look at Romans 12, 13 through 17 now, these verses demand a power source that is way different than the energy of the flesh. You've got to have a power source here in these verses that's way different from the energy of the flesh. And that's why that power source is the Spirit of God working in us through the Word of God. You've got to have that to be able to do these verses. People claim they do them and they don't read them. There's a lot of a lot of lip service when it comes to these verses right here. These verses are hard to do if you don't apply, put the doctrine in, in your life. And we're, I'm going to read all these verses again. Romans 12, 13 through 17. Now just read it. Romans 12, 13. Distributing to the necessity of saints. Do you do that? Giving to hospitality. Do I do that? Uh, bless them which persecute you. Do I do that? And curse not. Do I do that? Verse 15, Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Do I do that? Verse 16, Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Do I do that? And then verse 17, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in sight of all men. Do I do that? And you read those verses like that, and you'll understand, I've got to have more than this flesh trying to accomplish this. It's not going to work with your flesh. You'll fail to do that. So we're going to look at two things today as far as we can go to verses 13 and 14. We'll look at these first two. And we're going to consider the power of the Spirit of God working inside of a believer. Consider that, that the power of the Spirit of God working inside of a believer. And He works inside of us, like Romans 12, 13, first of all. Distributing to the necessity of saints. Giving to hospitality. You've got to have the Spirit of God working in us uh, to accomplish this. You know, you look at Romans 12, 13. Distributing to the necessity of saints. Giving to hospitality. That's when saints have needs. You think about saints. You're a saint. You're saved. You're a saint. We have needs. All of us do. From time to time. You may not have any today, and I hope you don't. But we do have needs, and automatically people will ring the bell, money, 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 money. And it's not that. It's more than that. It's spiritual needs. We're going to look at that here in a minute. So, Romans 12, 13, he says there in that verse, distributing to the necessity of, of, of the saint, distributing to the necessity of saints there. Well, when you distribute, what do you do? You give out. Well, that, that leads to a question, what, what are we going to give out? Well, we're give, going to give out to the necessity, first of all. And that's a quality of, or state of being in need. So, you're a saint just like I am. And you may have a need today. And we're going to talk about that need. So, saints have needs. And you know what we're made up of? Spirit, soul, and body. We have needs in all three. My spirit, my mind has needs. My soul has needs. And... For sure this flesh has needs. So you think about that. As you get older, 
What's your flesh doing? Doing is perishing. Do you have needs in your flesh? All the time. So, thinking about that, how many know about your needs? You've got a spirit, soul, and body. Have you got a need in your spirit today? Have you got a need in your soul today? Have you got a need in your flesh today? How many know about that? You'll, you'll say, you're talking to yourself right now, I do. Well, what is it? I don't want to share it with you. That type of thing. You know, people have a tendency to do that, but the only way somebody's going to know you've got a need is to communicate with people. That's the only way that you're going to know. He says there in Romans 12, 13, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Now, given to hospitality, when you read the word hospitality, I know you've got the notes there, but the word will pop out is hospital, if you look at it like that way. You can spell hospital with hospitality. And so, given to hospitality. <coughs> uh, so, ho a hospital. What goes on there in the hospital? Well, when my heart surgery, I had, I had to have care. I had to have bi bypass surgery. When my gallbladder went out, I had to have surgery. So I had to have care. And had to be taken care of at the hospital. Well, what about, you think about saints. You think about patients are sick, they need help in the hospital. Well, what about the saints? Saints get wounded and they get hurt. And they need help. They need care. Just like a hospital. And the local assembly, we have the privilege to distribute to the saints. And I'm not talking about money as such right now. We have the privilege to do that. Here's an example. If you look at Romans 12, 4 and 5. Romans 12, 4. Romans 12, 4 it says, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. That's your physical body, Paul starts out with. Then he changes to verse 5. So we, being many, are one body in Christ. See that? We're one body in Christ, and every one member is one of another. So you think about Paul compared the body of Christ with our physical body. So whenever you think about comparing the body of Christ with your physical body, you, you think about the hospital, verse 13, Romans 12, 13, distributed from the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. There's the hospitality. There's the hospital. And when you think about the hospital there, and you think about uh, the folks need help. They need spiritual help. And uh, you know what? The Word of God is our medicine today. You know, we, we're just like a hospital as brothers and sisters in Christ. We're here as a local assembly to help one another spiritually. And the medicine that we use is the King James Bible rightly divided following the Apostle Paul. And we give that out. We build up that doctrine in us. We learn the doctrine, but we also learn how to apply the doctrine. And that's what Paul is teaching us here in Romans 12, 13 through 17, to learn how to apply the, apply the doctrine. So the Word of God is a medicine. So whenever a believer, a believer's got a spirit, he's got a soul, he's got a body. Now, the body, the only thing we can do with the body is go to the doctor and get medicine, pray for you, but give verses to you, give you medicine to help you. You've got aches and pains in your body. Your body can cause misery when you're sick, when you're hurting. And you can't think straight, so you need a brother, you need a sister to give you, to nurture you, to give you something in the Word of God to help you in this time of nature you're in with this physical body. And you know this, your mind gets messed up. It's easy to get confused. It's easy to leave the Word of God out of your soul and not build that doctrine up like the Corinthians did. They didn't build a doctrine up in their soul. And therefore they were carnal. They were fleshly. And you know what we read, it, it, the flesh is contrary to the Spirit of God. So they couldn't function based, properly based on who they were in Christ. It wasn't grace functioning at all. They weren't producing fruit for the Lord. So there's issues with that right there. So when you think about uh, as far as nurture or believer, somebody, you come to me, Brother Ron, you come to me, and you say, I'm sick, and I really need you and need some encouragement from you. And I give you the word. 
I don't tell you about my past experiences, sickness, but I give you something from the Word of God. I nurture you and I edify you. I, I'm teaching you as far as the doctrine, giving you the doctrine in, in the details of your life there. And you know, that, that's something that's very important to help other people. And you don't see a lot of that enough. I'm, I want to encourage you. I don't want to tear you down. I want to encourage you. Even though you may be sick, and you may be going through a rough time, but I'm going to give you scripture to edify you and build you up during this time of tr trouble that you're in. And, and that, that means a lot right there. You know, it, that takes for me to be able to do that. I'm just using my, myself, Brother Ron's example. For me to be able to help a brother like that, that takes inner man strength. That, for me, I've got to have it. If I don't have inner man strength, all I can do is the brother comes and I'll say, Brother, I'll be praying for you. Well, that's not enough. Give the word. Give strength. Give them encouragement. Edify. Build them up. And the only way you can do that, you've got to have inner man strength. And I'll tell you this. It takes inconvenience and our willingness to help someone else. I mean, is it convenient? Is it convenient for me? Somebody comes up to me and says, oh, I need to talk to you. I'm having a health issue. I need you to help me and share some work, the word with me. Well, that takes a willingness. That takes the time right there. In, it's inconvenience in one sense, but if you've if you're got the doctor in you, it's not inconvenience. Give, give, take time and spend time with your brothers and sisters and encourage those people. So when you read Romans 12, 13, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. You know, given, given, to, given to hospitality. You think about that. That requires choice. When you give hospitality, there's a hospital, there's a caregiving, that's choice there. You have to make that choice. And the flesh will always try to find fault with people. The flesh will always try to pick and judge if you don't watch it. You'll say, well, there's no need for me to try to waste my time on that person. They're not going to listen. Now, you've been down that way too. We've all had thoughts. You may not have talked, said it out loud to anybody, but you've had talk, you've talked to yourself. I just... No, what, how can I help? I've helped many times before and hadn't done any good. You know, we, we've done all that and we, we've been down that road there. But hospitality requires choice. You know, you ever thought about how does God comfort us? How does He comfort just me? I'm going to use myself. How does He comfort me? Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And we, I'm sorry, 2, Timothy, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. How does God comfort me? And He does it by the Word of God. In 2 Corinthians 1, chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation. You think about your tribulation. Think about your trouble that ye may be able to comfort them which are in my tr in any trouble by the comfort of we ourselves are comforted of God. How did God comfort me when I was going through this tribulation that I was going through? He comforted me by the Word of God. How can I comfort somebody else? By the same Scripture. You can use the same Scripture and give them comfort and grace. God's Word never wears out. But you can give them comfort. Now, look at this. Ephesians chapter 5. Here's more advanced doctrine than Corinthians. So going over to Ephesians 5, you're building on that foundation. The foundation is Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, and Galatians. Now you're building the framework, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. You look at Ephesians 5, 16. You're building that house of doctrine in your soul. Well, look at Ephesians 5, 16. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. <coughs> verse 6, that's 15, verse 16. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Notice that rede redeeming the time. When you redeem something, you buy up the opportunities that come our way. There's opportunities that come our way to redeem the time. Watching everything that's going on for our opportunity. 
edifying ourselves. Redeem the time. Edify myself every day. And don't procrastinate. And edify and build up that doctrine in me every day. And, and what's it going to do? I'll have an opportunity somewhere down the road to help another person, another believer. But if I don't build up that doctrine in me, what am I doing? Flesh. Flesh is contrary to the Spirit. Now there's a battle there. You got that. Then when you do have the opportunity to help somebody else spiritually with the Word, you can't do it. Not like you should. So we've got a wonderful opportunity to apply grace in our lives every day. And that's my goal. That's what I want to do. And life is the opportunity to apply the Word, the doctrine, in the details of my life. You think every detail that you go through every day, there's, there's the words here, Romans 2, Philemon. You can apply, you can pull verses if you'll renew your mind and know where the verses are at. And whenever you're in a circumstance, pull the verses out and say, Lord, I know this is your word. I know you're the God of all comfort. And you're going to comfort me and help me as I go through this. And I'm just going to walk by faith. And that's a big difference. You know, you think about the week. I was going to go to one passage, but I'll, I'll use Romans 14.1. Is there any weak brethren out in the, that are saved today? And you know there are. There's a lot of weak brethren. So, weak brethren, Romans 14.1, you've got the doctrine built up in you. Now, these are applying the doctrine in the details of your life. Romans 12-16. Well, look at Romans 14.1. Paul says this, Romans 14.1. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. No, receive him. Notice that weak in the faith. The ones that are weak in the faith, then that's when they need care. They need a hospital, spiritually. And they've got you to provide the medicine, the Word of God. Sound doctrine, right? The Bible. So, you, you think about that there in Romans 12, 13. Distributing to the necessity of saints. Whether it's an inconvenience, if it is, it's still okay. Give it out. Take time to help the brethren. Give, give it to hospitality. Then here's another one. Romans 12, 14. This is difficult to do flesh-wise. Romans 12, 14. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. So, when someone persecutes you, what are you to do? Paul says there in verse 14, bless and curse not. That's what he said. Bless and curse not. It's that simple. Well, what do we tend to do? We tend to curse. And you'll say, how do we curse? You'll say, well, I, I don't use bad language. I don't use curse words. Well, how do we curse? You got what you deserve. That's what you say. That's cursing. You're also wishing it ill upon a person. Have you ever done that? And you know, I, I wouldn't want to see a hand. But we have. We're guilty. Wishing ill on somebody. That you're cursing that person. And I'm glad that it happened. happened. You hear that all the time. And they're cursing that person. <laughs> they got what they deserve. And that, you know, that's a nat natural tendency of the flesh. And when I say that, you look, you, you think about Romans 1 over there. What happened to those Gentiles in Genesis 11? When, they, when God gave them up, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Well, just read Romans 1, 29. We'll read one of these verses. Romans chapter 1, verse 29. These Gentiles got a reprobate mind in Genesis 11. And here's what a reprobate mind leads to, Genesis 1, 29. Notice in Genesis 1, 29, and being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, you know, that's, you think about greed, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, and you backbiters, you can read all that there, that's a reprobate mind. And that word maliciousness in verse 29 Wishing bad or intent to hurt somebody. I mean, think about that. Then you get over to Romans 12 there again. You know, all these in Romans 129, that's a product of the flesh. It's all flesh. Those Gentiles, they didn't want God. They didn't want to know God. 
God gave them up. God gave them over. And they got a reprobate mind. And it's all flesh. That's all it was. Uh, Romans 12, 14, going back there. In Romans 12, 14, Paul says, Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. You know, it says, Bless them which persecute you. What does our flesh want to do? Persecute them back. Get even with them. That's, that's what we want to do. What are we saying when, we, when that happens? We're cursing them when we're trying to get even to them with them. That's all you're doing. And that's what Paul's telling us there. He said they're blessed. And you know, that's a wonderful word there in Romans 12, 14. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. So he uses bless twice in the verse. And that requires, to bless requires a change in our thinking. It's a different power source. You know, when you bless somebody that's persecuting you, your thinking has to change. There's something, the power source has to change internally in your inner man. You're no longer wanting to get even with that person, but you're now, you're going to bless that person. You know, there's something operating inside of us. The persecutor, I can bless that person. How? How can I bless somebody that's persecuted me? I can tell them that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for their sins. That's blessing them. And I can tell them that He died for you. That He, he died on that cross and shed His blood on that cross for your sins. He was buried and He was raised again. And He's willing to give you eternal life to keep you out of the devil's hell. I can bless them by doing that. Instead of trying to get even with that person. Carnal thinking, flesh. You see, we don't have enough doctrine. When we do that, we don't have enough inside of us built up to be able to bless, to give the gospel out. Instead, we want to have bitterness and anger and all that built up in us. You know, what, what is running me if I try to persecute some, uh, someone persecuting me? The flesh. That's all it is. The flesh is what runs you when you try to get even with somebody else. You know, what's the flesh got? Emotions. And you put that flesh in motion. When, you, when somebody does you wrong and you try to get even, all you're doing is putting that flesh in motion. And you try to do that. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians six, First Corinthians chapter six and verse six, Paul says this. But brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. Now what have you got there? You got unbelievers in that verse, and you got brother goes uh, notice it with brother goeth to law with brother, and notice it says in that before unbelievers. Now that's that's sad to see that. Verse seven says, Now therefore there is utterly a fall among you. Well, because you go to law one with another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourself to be defrauded? And all of you know what defraud is. To cheat, beat somebody out of something, rip somebody off in that time. Why do you not rather take wrong with a brother? And he's writing the believers here. And you, you think about the flesh, the emotions. Here's, a, here's an example. These verses will help our thinking with people that are, that are against us. Turn to Titus chapter 3. This, these are powerful verses in Titus chapter 3. I saw these a few years ago and I try to watch what I say. In Titus chapter 3 and verse 1, Paul says, first of all, in Titus 3 1, put them in mind. Well, let's just look at that phrase, put them in mind. Put them in mind. In other words, he says, remind the saints to be subject to principalities and power, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. All right? Now, I, now I put them in mind. Look at verse 2. To speak evil of no man. That's what it says. Speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. 
You know, do all men, when you read verse 2, do all men deserve gentleness and kindness and accept with the way they live? And the answer would be no. But, let me tell you something. I didn't deserve it either. Because I was just like that. You was too before you got saved. We didn't deserve it. And what made the difference? What came along and changed us? Verse 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasure, living in malice and envy, hateful, and hating one another. You may have been guilty of some of that. Verse 4. But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us. By the watching regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which He shed on us abundantly, how? How the Father shed it through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. You know, that, that explains why we should be gentle in showing all meekness unto all men. You, you remember where you came from. And we ought to be gentle and meek towards all people. And why? Well, we can see what God's done for us in, in His Son. Going back to Romans 12, 14. Romans 12, 14. These verses can't be accomplished by the flesh. You've got to have more. You've got to have the power inside you, the Spirit of God working in you through the Word. You look at Romans 12, 13 through 17, verse 14. Notice what he says there in Romans 12, 14. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Somebody persecutes you, what you've got to do? Bless. How are you going to do it? Give the gospel out first. Give the gospel out to that person. And, and after the, if they're saved, give the word out to them. And that's how you, how you bless. So, I want to change my life, but I can't. And I've been down that road. Before I learned the truth, I was saved in 1970. And before I came to the knowledge of the truth, I had a lot of issues. Still do have issues. But the word's what changes you. The power's in the word. I was through the Holy Spirit teaching. So I, I can't. I want to change, but, but I can't on my own. I've got to allow the Spirit of God working in me through the Word of God and let the Word change. And the Word will change if you're willing. So the power of the Spirit of God working inside of a believer. That's a wonderful thing. And I'm thankful for His grace.